Hi guys, it's Natalie here. Today I wanted to show you my process of creating these fun and messy and layered mixed media tags. And I have got my three-year-old son helping me today, so please excuse the little um, hand that you see popping in from time to time. So the first thing that I did was I cut my tags using the um, classic tag die from Neat and Tangled, and I've used watercress paper here, but any um, thick, absorbent type of paper, watercolor paper would be really good. And I'm putting down some color um, by using this smooshing technique. Now, you might have heard of this, it's not a new thing. All you can see me doing there is adding the ink from the ink pad directly onto just this old piece of plastic packaging and then spritzing a bit of water onto it and then pressing that down onto my tag. And every time I do that, I use my heat gun to dry off the tag in between the layers and then I just add another layer on top of it. And I've done that with a couple of sort of complementary colors uh, until I've got the effect that I want. Now, what you can see me do here is this is one of my little tricks. You know when you use watercolor paper or you've used lots of wet onto your um, paper, you can often have it sort of warped and buckled at the end. So one of the things I do is I just quickly run it through my mink machine or if you wanted to use um, a laminator, it flattens it out nicely. Now the next layer that I'm adding is to uh, grab one of my neat and tangled stencils. Uh, the first one I used there was the swirly twirly stencil and then this one is the nested hexagons and I'm using a very uh, heavy body gesso just to um, you know smear it on and it's not supposed to be perfect it is supposed to be sort of uh, not quite perfect and mottled and specifically what I'm trying to avoid is getting some of that gesso right down the edges, um, specifically down that right hand side and you'll see why when it comes to uh, where I want to add my stamp sentiments. Now the next part that I'm doing here is to use uh, some watercolors to color in my floral images. I'm using the stamp set called Friendly Florals. Uh, it's one of my favorite floral stamp sets from Neat and Tangled because there's really a lot of images in it and it gives you lots of possibilities. And I am no watercolor artist by any extent and I have just used this very um, sort of loosely applied, no real technique, but um, what I'm doing is using my colors from the lightest to the darkest and I'm just adding them in what I call sort of this um, dotted technique. So you can see that um, when there's a big area to fill, I uh, can color it in first with my lightest color and just sort of smooth that all the way out. And then sometimes I need to dry off the layers again in between uh, colors. And then the next layer that I'll add is the next darker color um, and then use it in sort of this dotty pattern just in the areas that I want it to uh, go in. Um, and as I said, you know, there's no real technique or, or artistry to this, but because it's watercolor, I find that it's really forgiving and you can get away with um, not being, you know, a real sort of, you know, artist. Um, now, all I'm doing here is just to arrange uh, all of the bits that I've cut out. So I've cut out, you know, I just went ahead and stamped all of the uh, floral images from the stamp set and then I colored them all in and then cut out a whole bunch of them and then set about arranging them on my tag um, just until I was happy with how that looked. You can see that what I've done is uh, use the same, um, like on that blue tag, all of the flowers are yellow. And then on this pink tag, all the flowers are blue. And if you can see up in the top on the green tag, all the flowers were red. So the colors that I chose for the flowers, I specifically chose to be sort of the exact opposite complementary color to the color of the tag. Um, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is if you looked at a color wheel, you would see that blue and yellow are on opposite sides of the color wheel. So it gives a really nice contrast um, to the tag. Um, I have stuck down all of those floral images and now I'm stamping my sentiment into that right hand corner. As I said, that's why I wanted the gesso not to go quite to the edges so that it would give me an almost smooth surface to be able to stamp that sentiment on there. And the sentiments I'm using, I've um, picked from the So Many Sentiments stamp set, again from Neat and Tangled of course. 
And now we're getting to another one of my favorite techniques. You could see that I have used some white glue um, onto that piece of, piece of plastic packaging and then I added some water to it so it was a lot sort of more um, viscous or a lot more runny. And then I used my paintbrush to splash some sprinkles of the glue onto my tag and then I added glitter all the way over it. Um, so it gives this really sort of fun effect and the glue, because it is still um, thick, has quite a raised um, appearance to it. It's almost like adding enamel dots but with a much more sort of scattered approach. Um, and on these tags I'm using a very similar technique but instead of that fine glitter I'm using uh, this um, like it's almost like a mica powder it's got flakes of glitter in it so just something a little bit different so I was experimenting with different things um, here because I'd already sort of finished most of those other tags and I just wanted to show you that glue splatter technique now I'm going ahead and showing you um, how I've assembled this tag right from the beginning uh, so those are all my pieces of the flowers uh, that I'd already gone ahead before the video and colored them in and cut them out just to save a little bit of time and um, as I said I, I used sort of blue as the main color of my flowers on this pink tag but I did sneak a little bit of pink and purple in there as well um, I always have trouble limiting myself to just one color so uh, they did sneak in a little uh, bit of extra color in there um, and I'm using uh, this um, craft glue like this clear craft glue to stick these down because uh, one it's not a quick drying glue and so it gives me the ability to sort of um, pop the flowers on but then to still move them around so that I can rearrange where I want them to go uh, and it also gives me a little bit of extra lift onto these flowers so not quite as much lift as foam tape and and I you know thought about going with the foam tape but because I was going to be posting these in the mail I still wanted them to be reasonably flat but the glue just gave me a little bit of lift and that's what they all look like in the end